it is Rebecca R. Jones with a Bible art journaling challenge. We are in Deeper Still, Lesson 9, and that is the Bible that you probably have seen quite a lot recently from me, but this is a Bible that I'm going to be doing my first bit of artwork in, and I just wanted to show you the differences here. That one, the double column ESV journaling Bible, it has these margins of space, and this is the interleaved Bible, which means that interleaved in between each page is a blank page for you to create on and it's really up to you what you like and I want to move on to ink tents this is a lesson that's really going to be focused on ink tents but I'm going to show you a little bit about pencils versus blocks and I have both the 72 set and the 24 set because I started with the 24 set and I just wanted to try out all of the colors and I've written the names of the colors on there with a white paint pen so that I could see what they were easily for my own reference. They don't come like that, but you can do the same thing. And so I went ahead and did that. And there's some really beautiful colors, but you can mix your own colors with a smaller palette. And this 24 set is a great little set, which I'm going to use today. And I'll show you a little bit about how this works. So the ink tense blocks are actually like watercolor. That's the Gonze Tombi watercolor. And just like you would pick up watercolor, you can pick up these ink tense blocks. And now that is my pencil case. I've actually moved it into this pencil case. This is the exact same color palette of ink tense, the 72 colors but they're in pencil format and I'll show you a little bit how each functions in a bit so you can tell which one might be ready uh, for you and that's just like watercolor pencils the main difference between watercolor and ink tense is that ink tense is ink and as such when it dries if you activate all of that color meaning you get it wet when it dries it is permanent which means that you don't have to worry about it scrubbing back up or lifting up it may not be what you want, but it is good. And I've made little samples for myself because this is very intense color and it's very difficult to get a, a gauge of what the color is if you don't try it out. So I've got myself some tea because it's quite cold here in England this time of year while I'm filming. So I'm headed over to Psalm chapter eight, the whole chapter. And I'm going to start by doing some page prepping. You don't necessarily need to page prep when you use watercolor, but I find that often if you're not familiar with watercolor, it can be possible for you to end up going and bleeding through because there's too much liquid introduced to your paper and it actually buckles and it kind of crinkles and if you like that sort of thing that's fine but I find that just like you need to prime your walls in your house before you paint them so that your walls don't soak all the color in and you end up buying twice as much paint just to paint your walls in your house you want to page prep in your Bible so that you can have everything ready to receive that creativity on top of the page and to work properly. So it's a, a good process and I do teach how to do that in my page prep course. That's a separate matter. But what I wanna show you here is the difference here of how this works when you do watercolor versus ink tense blocks versus ink tense pencils. So I'm going to add a red color to each of these boxes and I'm going to leave the top ones alone and the bottom ones I'm going to lift a little bit of color up and show you what happens here. So when I paint, you can see it's the same exact process. I'm getting my paintbrush wet and I'm just rubbing it on those blocks. I could pick up the block just like that and scribble it right in and that's kind of handy. But what ends up happening is it leaves these rather embedded bits of color right on the surface and it's not as a creamy texture and it is harder to activate all that color because it's sort of embedded in the surface of your paper which means it's easier to lift later and if that's what you're going for or you want that sort of textury look you can certainly do that but if you don't want to then I suggest using it like watercolor and just applying your brush to the block so this is what you can do. You can actually put water right on the tip of your pencil and apply it the same way you would 
apply your brush to uh, that block. And so you can have this happen. It's a little bit challenging. I've gotten a little bit closer here. You can see that if you kind of flick your wet brush against the pencil, you can make some flick marks and that's kind of fun. Or you can watercolor in or, you know, ink tents in your surface. But as you can tell, it can be hard to activate some of those if you've got that scribble on there. And I find that I just don't use a very heavy hand. On watercolor paper, it's more intense because there is texture there to try and pick up what you're putting across the surface. You don't get that in Bible paper quite as much, but it can be a problem if you use a heavy hand. So I'm waiting right now for this color to completely dry. And the Gonzai Tombi watercolor has a little bit of a sheen to it because of how it dries, but it is dry now and it's totally safe to use in your Bible any of these. So I'm just adding some water. That's all that is. And you can see the watercolor lifts because even though it's dry, it comes up. And now this, you can see that there's very little of it that did not get activated. So a little bit came up. And now in this case, there is even more coming up because it wasn't activated and my cloth was a little bit damp. And now I can go in and I can actually move around some of it that did not get activated that I can just keep painting. So I hope this gives you an idea of how ink tense pencils, blocks, and watercolor work separate to each other. And now I'm going to focus entirely on ink tense blocks this time because over in the Bible Art Journaling Challenge Facebook group, I actually did a poll and asked what kind of supplies you guys would like to be learning about as we sort of come to a close to this season of this series. And I came to the understanding that there was a lot of interest in learning about ink tense blocks. So I wanted to respond to that. And I have this as a free download. You'll see later that I actually added more to it. And it's a free download on my blog. So you can just go into the description box of this video and click on the link for the blog post. Go over to the blog post and you'll be able to fill in your details and I'll email that free download to you. You can print it out, you can resize it and make it work for you personally. And that will help you to be able to use it for yourself if you'd like. And now I'm going to paint myself a galaxy because we're talking about how majestic God is. And this scripture really, really lends itself to this. And I wanted to show you guys this. It's really, really simple creative wise, and it is a lot of fun. I think that when people hear the ink tense is permanent, it can sound scary because you think this isn't going to go anywhere. What you want to kind of keep track of, if you can notice, I'm trying to scrub along the edges that are too harsh if I don't want them to be harsh, because as soon as ink tense dries, it's not going to move really. So now I'm just going through and I'm making some really organic little shapes of color. And I have added a little bit of the orange in there, but I'm being super, super careful to make sure that the orange completely dries before I add any other color over it. Because if I touch the orange with a color that's on the opposite side of the color wheel, I'm going to make brown. So I'm not going to, that orange and blue next to each other are going to look like a beautiful contrast. But if I don't let the orange dry completely, then when I put it over top of it, it will collide and make muddy stuff. So that's what you want to do. Don't mix stuff that's on the opposite end of the color wheel. Just use it as a complementary, let it dry and then go over it. So it was just a little bit of contrast, but all I'm doing is a very messy bit of a wash all the way around. Super non-organic stuff. And I'm lifting a little bit of the color to give it some dimension. The thing with the galaxy is that everything's supposed to be really misshapen and so there's no room for perfection here. It's just about putting some color in. Nothing should look like a pattern. It should all look like it accidentally sort of landed in different shapes all over the place and just have some beautiful color. Just make it your own if you want to do something like this. And let me go ahead and read this 
rather short nine less uh, it's nine verses in the chapter Psalms 8 so that you can hear about God's majesty and what he's saying even about us in here this particular series deeper still of the Bible art journaling challenge is all about adventuring into the depths of God and I think that this is something that is really fascinating to have a look at so Psalm 8 verse 1 says O Lord our Lord how majestic is your name in all the earth you have set your glory above the heavens out of the mouth of babies and infants you have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger When I look at your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings, and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands, and you have put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, and all the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. That is such a beautiful chapter, but there's one particular verse that you may even recognize because it is very famous, and I think it might go down in history as one of the most out of context scriptures that people quote. It says, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? You see, I think I want to talk about something that's a bit awkward, but really important. It is really important that we read the rest of the chapter because there's something very interesting that happens in this chapter. I always tell you to read in context. And never more important is it than in scripture. And in this verse is a great example of it because so often people look at Psalm 8 verse 4, what is man that you're mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? And they believe that that means, you know, who, who am I? I'm nothing. God thinks I'm nothing. Now you can see I'm taking a picture of this and I just want to suggest to you that if you're not really sure how something's developing, just look, take a photo, and then look separately at your photo. And it will start to give you an idea of how you feel that your creative process is developing. And that's just an artsy trick that people do when they need to get some perspective to kind of walk away, but they need to, you know, stay put and engage with what they're doing then you can just take a photo of it and look at it from a different perspective. It just helps you to get some perspective about what you're looking at and might make you feel like, oh yeah, that's a place that I can add some color and, you know, just let it be fun. But just toss all of that and have some fun if you want. And you'll notice also that I'm letting there be some really hard lines there where it finishes a particular color because I'm overlapping this very transparent color so that you're getting some depth of color. So there's no one layer coloring going on here. There's three or four layers. So things are drying and then I'm going over it with the next color and it it dries relatively quickly and you end up with this sort of rich depth that you expect from a galaxy where you look deep into its surface and you see intricacies and things that kind of go deeper and deeper. And I think that's fun. I'm trying to keep things a little bit light in the center so that when I go over it with some black pen, it will have some contrast and the black pen will stand out. So that's kind of why I put that paper there. I'm not going to use it to trace straight through in the end, but it is there as a reminder as I got going. So back to the scripture, I find that this verse here It says, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? You know, man and the son of man, it was really, it was just saying, why would you care about humans? And out of context, people have 
quoted the scripture as a way to back up the idea that we are nothing, but we're just terrible sinners, and who is God that he should care about us? But they've forgotten the complexity of the story of God. He actually created humankind so that he could actually have a people who would choose out of their own heart to worship and love him. And it's a love story. And he chose to give us authority to, on his behalf to actually step into things that he gives over to us as his love story to us. So follow me here. It says, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? It goes on and says, yet you have made him, man, a little lower than the heavenly beings. As in, there's all these other things that are still lower, but that one spot there, above all of that other stuff, that's where we sit. That's where humans sit is with a lot of clout, a reason to care. And follow me on this. You need to hear my heart on this because I'm not saying that we don't need God. We need God. But with God, we actually are in a place where we carry something that God needs us to step into so that we can love the world around us in a a very rich and wonderful way a deep and meaningful way. And we can't do that if we think that we're nothing. See how I'm kind of making my brush dance around and how that's adding that beautiful texture of blue? That just comes from adding the color, going in and just making your brush go in different ways and holding it in different angles. Try it out and see how it works for you. So in here, it goes on and says, you've made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. He's crowned humans with glory and honor. You've given him dominion over the works of your hands. See, the, the Bible actually talks about that. He, he told Adam in the book of Genesis to have dominion over the the animals and you know we as humans were given things that God just said you know I could do this on my own but I want to give you authority to manage this earth on my behalf and you know we don't always do a perfect job managing the earth that's that's real life we don't always get it right but he has bestowed that responsibility and that authority on us because he cares for us and because he wants us to do significant things for him. But the big lie that the enemy likes to do is he likes to take a truth and twist it in his direction. And the truth is, is why on earth would God care for us? Why would he be mindful of us? But later it says that he's given us dominion. It says, you've given him dominion over the works of your hands. The works of God's hands have been given, we've been given dominion over those things. That is a really hard thing to get our head around. It is one of those deep things about a spiritual tension. We don't see ourselves living in victory 100% of the time. But what we do see is that God has given us a mandate to carry what he has started and to love the world around us in a very beautiful way and we can do that we can reflect his majesty in the world it says after all these things about how we've been given dominion and all of these sort of things it's a sort of paradox if you will this this truth intention that we are just humans And yet God has established so much in us because of that. Now you can see I've got Inktense White and I'm just getting it just sloppy enough that I can use the brush to go in and I went with big ones to begin with and then I went in with a little brush to get little ones. And that's how you do it because the droplets are smaller because there's less water in the brush. 
and then there is my galaxy stars and I'm just flicking specifically in areas where I want it to show up or make a sort of collection of stars in one area and then make sure it's completely dry so that I don't start moving my stars around and then I'm going to start in in a bit here in doing the lettering so this might feel like a complex story and I am here to say that it is a complex story spiritually speaking there are these things in the bible that are like truth's intention so it is true that we are nothing without God and it is true that we are everything with God and it is true that we are given dominion as God's kids to go after the things that he's put in front of us to be able to do. You can see I've updated that now and it says Psalms 8 on it because I wanted to reflect the whole passage there and I'm going to go over and just trace the outline of my lettering and again this is a free download on my blog so if you like the lettering and you want to use this idea you can and if you don't like the idea of having to use a light box or you don't have something like that I'm linking to all the products I've used so you can use you know hop over to my blog and look at what I'm using and figure those things out if you want to and you can do that but you could also use a little bit of pen and go over this to begin with and let it completely dry with pit pen with black pit pen because pit pen is permanent so it's gonna stay once it's completely completely dry and perhaps even get a heat gun on it just make sure it's really heat set then go in with your ink tents and you'll have a really good outline to then go back over the top of it so that it has some dimension and that's how you could do it I decided to do it this way I'm not sure why but I think it's probably because as you create sometimes things develop as you go and so we just work with it as we go you know this is a topic that I really want to ask you to spend some time thinking about this idea that God is majestic and he actually has asked us to step in to a place where we steward some of his majesty here on earth as his ambassadors to show people a better way of life show people how good it can be to serve God his majesty is such a beautiful thing and I am so so honored that he would let me be his kid and with that means that I'm God's kid I'm a kid of the king which means that I have rights and responsibilities to change the world and affect positively impact those around me and we all get that opportunity and it's just such a beautiful responsibility but it isn't something we can do if we believe that we are nothing. So I want to challenge that lie that you are nothing and remind you that with God, we are saints. We were once sinners and then we got saved. And if you are struggling to get your head around this, I want you to go to Romans chapter eight, have a read of, of that and process through this with me hop over to the blog spend some time with me connect with the community and let's talk about this and you know get some processing going because I want you to be able to impact the world in a positive way around you and impact your world and that can happen if you think that you are nothing you are a daughter of the king of kings you're a son of the king of kings and if you are not today you can receive him you just have to say hey i make mistakes sometimes i have made lots of mistakes and i give myself to you take me and let's start over you know we just have to repent and start over it's that simple and we too can step into a place of being able to help steward God's majesty here on earth. And 
I am so honored and humbled to be a part of that. And I want you to join me in that. I want us to impact the world in a positive way. And I want us to look at the scripture and really process that together. So come talk to me, hang out. All of the links are below if you've not had a look at them. And I will see you soon. Love you so much.